Yo, k a s o mina san. Welcome to my、uh, Maxi Tune review for Tournament Cars. The top five tournament cars as rated by yours truly, myself, Akuma. I rate this on purely experience and no statistical evidence whatsoever. I'm not Saws. Don't ask me about it. It's just how I feel. So let's talk about the difference between the tournament car and the casual car. Look, tournament car has the following traits, right? It has overall higher、uh, performance in all situations,、um, as well as great time attack、uh, standings. So when we say、uh, great overall situations, we mean no matter if you're trailing, blocking, dragging, leading, or otherwise creating distance or maintaining distance from other cars, it will do well,、um, as well as being. Good in、uh, all other courses, so you know you've got great in Hakone, great in C1, Yasu, Yokohama, Dick Kobe, Dick Osaka, Dick Hiroshima, Dick Fukuoka. No matter where you take this car, it will do well, just because it's just overall a higher performing car than others, right? So, for argument's sake, High Ace Pajero. They're, they're terrible everywhere. Not tournament viable, and if you think they are, they're not. They're they're really bad. As opposed to let's say.、Uh, A car that's not featured here. Let's say the GC8 WRX. It's a great car,、um, certainly in probably C1 and Hakone. But when you take it to Wangen, for example, it's two kilometers slower than you know an RX7 or a,、um, a GDR. Like it's you know, and that will also impede on you know your ability to chase, your ability to you know maintain ground, your ability to you know to lead and you know guess keep your opponents away. Stuff like this all matters, you know, in a tournament setting because you want to give yourself the best tools to do the best, and you don't want to be disadvantaged against someone else because they have a better car or a better rated car, I should say.、Um, so they're also big enough to block, but small enough to fit into small gaps. Again, highest bad example of this because it's huge. It you know it can block, but. You know, it doesn't fit in any gaps. Aventador, I fucking hate that car.、I、fucking hate the Aventador. It's it's huge, but can it fit into you know an R2 and a wall? No, it can't. You know, when you're turning a corner, its nose, its fucking big Pinocchio nose, is like, oh my god, you've hit a wall five times. I don't know. I, there's no wall in front of me, Mr. Aventador. Oh yeah, there is. You've hit it. See the sparks? Ah, I hate that car. It's too big. It honestly, it's just too long. Like stupid car. Again, bad example. Great, great performance everywhere, but it's just too big. I can't use. I can't use it well. I'm sure other people can, but I don't rate it high. Bad tournament potential to shit car, straight up. Um, and、uh, one thing that I I know Myth's gonna kill me on this is that it has great dress up potential. So you know it can change between grippy, slidey, understeer, oversteer. You know with a A flick of a switch in the settings, and despite what your what people know or think that they know, dress up matters. People dress up matters. Despite what Namco Bandai says on the website, despite what Myth says, dress up matters. Otherwise, why is my high ace stronger or weaker than other high aces? Why does Logic and Sora have you know dress up different dress ups in their movies? Maybe because dress up matters. Maybe because the answer's in front of us, but we're all just a little too naive to believe that something as little as a rim does make a difference. It does. Deal with it. That's what I'm saying. I challenge Saws to, you know, prove this wrong or correct or whatever. You know, they have all the resources in the world. They have legal disclaimers and lawyers to, you know, oh no, you guys are ripping on Saws. Oh, we're gonna sue you. You know what? Prove it. Prove to us that. That stuff like this matters because acceleration tests, yeah, okay. Dress up, probably more important. OCMs, a lot more important. But who took that away? Who took that away? And according to WMMT shit posting or WMT hell and shit posting, it is Saws. I'm not gonna say that they're responsible, but I'm gonna say that other people are saying that they're responsible. So, you know what? I don't know what to believe anymore because you know what? I I just want my OCMs back. I just want my gold plates. That's all I want. I just want to race against people that want to race against other people that want gold plates. I have one. I want more. You know, whose fault for taking that away? I don't know. Apparently, it's Saws. So, you know, if someone can illuminate, you know, the reason why this was taken, please do. I'd like to know. So then I can rant about it and get angry. But back to the review and the last point, which is pretty much a summary of everything, is that it has four of the following five: amazing、uh, acceleration, amazing top speed, superior handling to other cars. It's well weighted, and something that's a little controversial that I'll 
probably touch on in another tutorial is uh, wall recovery and boost in boost battles. So uh, they'll have four of the following five. Um, and that's pretty much what makes a good tournament car, a, you know, a good tournament car. Obviously, like these aren't set in stone. Uh, people will have different opinions, but certainly I think you'd agree that these are easily top 10, arguably top five. Um, obviously, high S is definitely not a tournament car, and if it is, then, you know, it just fuck. But anyways, on to the top five tournament car reviews. So we have the Mazda RX-8. This car, arguably one of the better cars in the game. Uh, originally the best car in the game before uh, the update to, um, I believe it was uh, Ma uh, Maxi Tune 4. Um, but this car's lost a lot of prestigious awards, but still overall a great car. It has a rotary engine, which means it has a really good top speed, has semi-decent acceleration, amazing handling. It's a Mazda, all Mazdas are amazing. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a well-rounded machine that will give you the tools to, I guess, do well against many other opponents. I guess the, the fact that it has low uh, wall recovery is probably negligible in the face of other cars, simply because this car performs well no matter where you take it. Hakone, C1, uh, you name it, this car's gonna do really, really well. Uh, one of the, I guess, shortcomings on it is that it's just not as popular as other cars, and I think that's just a minor thing, so definitely don't overlook this car. The Mazda RX-8 is simply a beast of a machine, give it a go, it's rated number 5. So number 4, we have the Mazda RX-7 FD. Uh, arguably one of the better time attack machines, if not the best time attack machine in the game at the moment. Um, it is it performs well no matter where you take it. Yokohama, C1, Kobe, Osaka, um, Hakone. It, this is a god tier of a car, you know, to say the least. It has a little bit of shortcomings in that it li it would like a little bit more weight. It would like to, you know, have a little bit more acceleration. But you know what? This car is a great solid foundation to bring to any car tournament um, to say, look, you know, this is the best car I have. Let's do it. It you know, is minutely worse than the other three cars that I'm going to feature, but that should not take away from the fact that this car is an amazing machine. It just performs well. It's more for running than blocking, I must say, but even in the blocking state, it does superbly well. And you're only looking at, uh, I guess, replacing this car for the next three cars when you're versing, you know, higher caliber opponents. And I'm talking about the Ansons, the H2Os, the Stitches, you know, just because that, that little bit of a difference will mean so much more in the long run. But, you know, as like a general tournament car, I would be comfortable using this if I didn't have any of my other cars. It's rated number four on this list. Definitely don't overlook it. It's an amazing car. The RX-7 FD is just absolute silk to play with. And if you overlook it, you're an idiot. One of my favorite cars, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 8. Now rated number three in the tournament top five. Certainly this is a car that has amazing potential and is a great alternative to the top tier cars um, that are you know, often bandwagons. The Evo 9s, the 32s, uh, to some extent the S30, um, but this car, simply amazing. Its strengths lie in the fact that it has amazing handling, its hitbox is pretty good, its size is amazing. No matter which course you take this car on, it will perform and it will bring out you know the best in you as a driver. Although it is uh, top speed uh, lacking uh, compared to some of the other cars, I feel that this car doesn't really need it. Its handling alone makes up for that uh, makes up for that lacking and look at here Evo 9 just mistakes and it slides in that's the power of the Evo 8 its handling is simply superior that to that of an Evo 9 anything that happens I guess if they take it too wide the Evo 9 uh, the Evo 8 sorry will absolutely punish anyone now watch this this car has enough weight and enough uh, strength to push this RX-8 out after making a mistake this is what the EVA 8 is really good at, punishing opponents for mistakes. Its handling makes up, you know, uh, a good, 
I guess, a strength for this car, as well as the fact that it accelerates like an absolute demon. It's it's an amazing car. Simply, you know, simply speaking, it is a great alternative for you know some of the bigger bandwagon cars out there. Um, as I said, this car is probably one of my more favorite casual cars. I have a lot of faith in this car simply because it's just something that is really easy to drive and great to use. Um, and 99% of the cars out there will fall to a person that has the same skill against this car. So, you know, it's just simply an absolute machine monster. It just is pretty good. Although its time attacks don't really represent its battle ability well, this car is definitely something you should consider if you want a tournament based car, if you don't already have the next two cars lined up. So Evo 8, rated number three. The number two spot goes to the Nissan Skyline GDR32. Truly a balanced machine, this car is an absolute battle monster in the game. Regarded as the best car in WMMT2, it's come back from the ashes and it's put itself back into the top spots in the current version of Maxitune 5DX+. It was really good in Maxitune 5DX and it wasn't that great in Maximum Tune 5, but slowly but surely this car has just clawed itself back to god tier status in, I guess, the tier car world. Perfectly balanced. This car can go anywhere and do anything. So it can go, you know, C1, Yoko, Hakone, Dick Osaka, Dick Kobe, Dick Hiroshima. No matter where you put this car, it's going to excel. The best thing about this car, I suppose, would be the fact that it's just so well weighted. It can block, it can run, it can drag, it can push people out of their lines. It can do anything, anywhere with absolute ease. The only bad thing about this car, I feel, is that it might be a bit longer. Although it's a double-edged sword, you, you, have no, you have more, I guess, space to use to block with in that rather than an Evo uh, or a RX-7 or an RX-8, but you can also get caught in corners. Although that's a bad and good thing, what you'll find most often is when you're trailing, you can dive opponents because the car's handling, despite it being an absolute tank of a car, it surprisingly handles very well. It's, you know, for argument's sake, just slightly worse than, a, um, than an FD or an RX-8. But it makes it up in, you know, the absolute disgusting acceleration. Its top speed is absolute spot on perfect. And this car is just one of those cars that if you have in your arsenal and you're looking to play a little bit serious, bring it out as a secret weapon. Certainly one of the better cars in the whole game at this point. A lot of people have used this car for tournament play that I've seen previously. And especially in Malaysia and overseas, it's a pretty damn reliable vehicle to use anywhere that you go. You're not going to be disappointed by this car. It ranks number two in this whole list, so definitely give it a go. Um, its dress-up choices are really good. You can pretty much make it do whatever you want. It's, you know, it's a jack-of-all-trades car where you want to avoid the Evo 9s, but you want something that will do it justice everywhere. It's, it does decent time attacks as well, so if you're into that scene or you want to see how well you do against top tiers, be my guest. This car's not going to let you down. An absolute battle monster. There's nothing more to say about this car. The GDR32, ranked number two in the top five uh, tournament cars. Get it. Surprise, surprise. Rated number one in the top five tournament cars is the Evo 9. It is probably the most overused car in the whole bloody game, but it's there for a reason. Because since Maxitune Maxi uh, 3, this car has just been at the top of the battle charts. It was originally um, an SBW clone, which is why so many people have it. But the reason why so many people sought after this car, aside from the fact that it was Triple S at the time, was that it's just so damn good. 
It excels like a beast. It handles decently, no matter which course you go or what position you're playing, whether it's blocking, whether it's leading, whether it's uh, maintaining distance or, you know, playing tag, or if it's dragging back, this car is an absolute beast of a car. So it's no surprise that this car takes the number one spot. The only shortcoming I have on this car is that its top speed isn't that great, so when you are chasing with uh, Skylines and uh, FDs, it it lacks in the boosting department, but I feel that somehow Namco was just like, you know what, let's just give this car a little bit extra boost, because I feel that no, no matter how far back you are, this car just comes back out of nowhere. Honestly, it just comes back and says, I'm an Evo 9, good luck to you. You'll find that this car, you know, is a great diver in turns, but it can also hold itself within turns in the inside where you can ride your opponent as they try to overtake you, which is one of the things that makes this car Im impeccably amazing. The fact that so many high tier racers use this on um, every occasion and constantly win with it is no surprise and is no... Um, I guess discount to the fact that this car is just stupidly overpowered and you know Namco I hope puts a, a I guess a, a nerf on this car or you know somehow but look this car is going to be top of the table for as long as I see it it's number one in the tournament list the Evo 9 it's simply amazing it is the best car for tournaments and so there you have it that is the uh, top five tournament cars as rated by yours truly Mr. Miyakuma some honorable mentions and a bit of a rant. Look, I would have liked the GDR32, uh, sorry, 34 to be uh, in the top uh, five. But when I was thinking about it, I thought to myself, look, this is an amazing overall car. No one uses it for tournament though. The only person that I think uses this for tournaments that, you know, I would, you know, say is top tier would be Eagle. And you know what? Whatever car he picks, he's going to top anyway. You know, it's just his preference to use a 34. If you used a, an Evo 9 or an Evo 8 or a, hell, even a, I wouldn't say a high ace. Like, I'm not going to go that fucking retarded. But if you use like a Rex, he would top. But, you know, I just feel like it's too big. And therefore, it, it should not belong in top five. If it was top ten, he would, it would definitely make it. If it was top six, definitely make it as well. It would have been the sixth car. Um, the 180e Mercedes, uh, the really old one, uh, also honourable mention. A great tournament car somehow, but you know, an amazing car in its own right. And one, uh, another car that really blew me away was the S15. Uh, surprisingly, really good. I don't know why, I don't know how, but this car was pretty spot on. Um, it's probably a worse Evo, but at the same time, it has decent statistics. Uh, a bit more, I guess, slidey than, you know, what you'd want it, but also a great mention. And the last mention that I'll make is the AE86 Trueno. This car surprised me when it came out, and it continues to surprise me for casual and tournament play. Uh, it, I lean towards tournament play for this car because it's such a great car, and I feel like its full battle potential hasn't really been explored. It's a great car, it's slightly smaller than an Evo, so obviously it fits into gaps a little bit better, uh, better. but um, in terms of blocking, it's a solid rock with amazing handling. Its acceleration is not great, but look, you know what, it's, a, it's an amazing car, definitely worth a tournament mention. Now, for my rant, look, I don't know if you guys have noticed, we, have no, we haven't had an OCM in the international server for a while. I want to know what's going on. I want to know where my OCMs are. I demand someone tell me what the hell's going on with our OCMs. Apparently, on the internets, you know, people are blaming sores for whatever reason. I want to know what happened. I actually just want to know what happened because I'm sick of hanging out day by day, sitting on my computer going, when am I going to get a gold plate? I'm sick of my fluffy dice. I'm sick of my fluffy plates. You know, someone was responsible for taking these OCMs away from me, and it shits me. I want to know who it was. Apparently it was Source. Look, if it was not you, Source, release a, release a statement saying that you weren't, you know, responsible in any which way, either directly or indirectly, uh, responsible for the discontinue of uh, OCMs, because you had no part to play on it. However, you know, if you did have a part to play with it, or not. Say, hey guys, look, we stuffed up, we messed up, you know, and, you know, we understand that we ruined it for you, you know, our apologies. Just, you know, I, I, I would like to know who, you know, 
who who's at fault here? Because that's apparently where the finger's been, you know, being pointed. And you know what? Like, it's just, it's absolutely despicable. Like, it is despicable that, you know, it, Namco, Man, Namco Bandai have stopped something that would generate them so much money for digital content that costs them nothing. It would literally cost them peanuts to do OCMs. But why have they stopped such a revenue-raising project? They would have been making stupid amounts of money, and yet they've stopped it. Something's gone on. I want to know who's at the bottom of this. And if it was Saws, you know, I want to see them lawyer up and say, you know what, Bandai and Manco, we understand that we fucked up. Blah, 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 blah. We apologize irrevocably. We, you know, da, 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 da. Please reinstate the OCMs and, you know, here's a letter of apology for, you know, stuffing it up. I just want to know what's happened. I understand the premise behind it. Apparently people were offering gold plate services and someone or something, you know, triggered Bandai Namco to stop doing that. I think it's absolutely despicable. And the people that were responsible for this should be held accountable and should have their gold plates taken away from them or their accounts closed and their cards deleted. You know what? Like, at this point, I just want OCMs back and whatever happens and whoever is responsible, I want them to put their hand up and say, you know what? I stuffed up here. It was my fault. You know, my bad guys. Because at the end of the day, you've ruined it for a lot of people. You've ruined it for, you know, the experts and, you know, the Maxi Tune community. And you've ruined it for yourself. Because at the end of the day, like, you guys are rats. Like, I'm going to call you guys out. You guys are rats. Whoever's responsible, you guys are the rats of the community. You guys are the J Rail of the community. You are the SPW and Rain Star of the community. Absolute low life dogs. That's where I'm putting it. If you're responsible, that's where you are. But anyways, until my next uh, video, Jane.